Howdy folks, welcome back to the Handyman for Hire YouTube channel. Uh, today we are going to show you how to braze in your copper line set if you're installing an AC system. So we already have our lines fitted here. I will also demonstrate how to use our bender tool. Um, it creates a really nice bend on anywhere between quarter inch to seven eighths line. This is three quarter line set. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be using here. <clears throat> so to start with, we need our striker, a mirror to check underneath all around these joints to make sure we're good before we do our actual nitrogen pressure test. Um, here I'll show you the tip that we're using for our oxygen and acetylene. This is called a rosebud tip. It really heats up amazingly fast um, for a more tight spot like if this was up against the wall you could use one of these but the rosebud tip gets it really hot so you're just in and out and you can cool it off faster to prevent messing up your valves this is the setup that we're using they're just small easy to tote around um, <laughs> turbo tote so this is the acetylene and this is the oxygen we want 10 psi on our acetylene and 20 psi on our oxygen and then over here we have our nitrogen tank and something that's pretty important when it comes to welding in a line set is having a nitrogen flow and what this does is it's going to prevent the inside of your copper lines from getting real oxidized and this like black carbon can get built up on the inside as you're brazing and so we want to avoid that and how you do that is you do a nitrogen flow so these can be found online they're relatively cheap and they're very easy to use i had one of these that was it had a little ball inside and you could adjust it but this is preset so it has three settings off purge if you're uh, blowing out cleaning out a line set with chemicals um, if you're swapping over from R22 to 410, and then you have braze setting. This will just allow a small amount of flow to go into the lines, not enough to blow your solder out, but enough to keep that inside of the pipe from getting that black carbon buildup. Being as I'm doing this quite often, obviously I'm gonna always do a nitrogen flow. If you're doing this yourself like a you know a diy kind of job back in the day you know they didn't have they didn't know that doing a nitrogen flow would help prevent that and their systems ran for 30 you know i've seen older systems run for 30 years as far as doing the nitrogen flow it's not something that you 100 percent have to do it's your system will function um, fine if you don't have nitrogen um, but it's one of those things that if you're gonna be doing this a lot, you need to get a nitrogen tank and a regulator um, so that you can do the nitrogen flow as you're brazing. So the last thing we're gonna need here is our gauges. And a lot of people have automotive gauges um, that actually have a needle or a, a, a preset for 410A, which is all of the newer equipment's gonna be 410A for residential. Um, you can get adapters for the ends of these if you're you know on a budget and you want to utilize the gauges you already have um, you can get them for pretty cheap uh, to convert these from a automotive style to a residential style okay so let's get started here so the first line that we're going to braze in is going to be our suction line so we're going to take our blue hose, make sure there's no pressure in here, and we're just going to hook it up. Now, go ahead and open up this side. We're going to take our yellow line, and then over here, we're just going to attach this to our nitrogen making sure that we are on the braze setting.
you can hear a flow now. So I'm going to move this over here to a safe spot where it's kind of out of the way. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two wet rags, just soak these in water. And we also have a bottle of water, or a spray bottle of water rather. And we're just going to keep this right here next to where we're brazing. So when we're done, we're just going to douse this with water and it'll cool it off really instantly. So what we're going to do here is we are going to just tightly wrap our valve because we don't want any damage to be occurring. And this will just minimize how hot this valve gets. I've installed a lot of these and I have yet to mess up one of these valves. Um, but you always want to be as cautious as you can. They make some putty that you can put on here. I've found that it's really messy. I've never had an issue with this. It's not messy. When you're done, you just take them off, cool off the pipe, and you're done. The other stuff wanted to stick inside all the little crevices. So I was not a fan of that. I wouldn't advise getting it if I was you. So our Silfloss, uh, many people call it different things, but it's the stuff that I use is called Stay Silv 5, Foss Copper Silver Brazing Alloy. So it has a certain percentage of silver in this rod, which makes it extremely easy to braze with. Notice how quickly I can get to the point of adding my silk boss so fast. So as soon as we're done, I'm gonna douse this, cool it off. Now one thing I forgot to mention, and you can tell just right off, if you do this without nitrogen, this will be significantly darker and just won't look as good. And one thing I forgot to mention is when you are brazing this in, wherever you want this rod to sink into or melt into, you want to heat that point up because the heat is going to pull that. So how I was taught this was to heat up both pieces, but then as you're letting this into this joint, you want to be heating it back here or back here towards where you want that braze uh, to be pulled into. Looks great. Great. We are golden. So next we'll move over to our smaller line. We'll just go ahead and leave that rag on there. And we're going to move our nitrogen to our other line. A small 3H line is extremely easy. It does not require much. and pull both of these off. OK, 
Okay. Okay, nice little close up here. See what it looks like underneath. A little build up at the bottom, but not a problem. Take a look at this one. And what you're looking for here is just any opening here where you can see a gap. Just make sure all of that is sealed really well. So that's pretty much it for uh, this part. Um, I have to braze in the other side. So I'm gonna do that. And then we'll jump to how to pressurize the system and make sure that we have zero leaks. All right, I apologize if the wind is kind of noisy. Um, so here we are, we've got our, we've had our nitrogen on for about 30 minutes now. We've had it at 350. It hasn't moved a smidge. So our lines are pressure tested and good to go. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just shut our nitrogen off and just let that out. So while our pressure is bleeding off there, I want to show you this really neat tool that I've got. So all it is is a pigtail. It's got a 110 plug with a ground and it's got three leads with alligator clips on it. And in order to bring down your power, like if you don't have an outlet, you can take this 220 power and bring it down to 110. So the way that you do this is you find your two lugs that are bringing 220 in and you attach your black lead to that one. And then your white and your green will both go to ground. That will reduce this 220 power to 110. And as always, be super careful when you're messing with live electricity. Um, sometimes these ones are hard to get to, so I opted for those. There's no way to turn those off, um, being as it's before the breaker. So sometimes these have a, uh, a shield on them, but sometimes I'll use a pair of channel locks and grab those so my hands aren't anywhere near this. So just a cool little tip there. So that's how I'm getting power to my vacuum pump, which we're gonna show you how to do that now that our pressure is down to zero. So we'll close these back off. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my micron gauge. Now this is a CPS VG200 micron gauge. And the way that I hook it up is just in a series like this. The micron gauge is great because it will tell you how well it's pulling down all the moisture in these lines. And it can also act as a leak detector. Um, 500 microns is considered really good. If you can pull your system down to 500 microns, you'll be good to go. Anything below 500 is fantastic. If you're not getting to 500, uh, it's very possible that you could have a leak. So it kind of acts as a leak detector as well. So we've got our vacuum pump here. We've got it plugged into our little pigtail over there. And we're just gonna hook up our yellow line. So the yellow will go from vacuum pump through the micrometer into the manifold. Red will go to our, our small liquid line. Blue will go to the suction line and back up. So that's how you connect that. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And we're going to go ahead and open both of these. You can hear the tone change of the vacuum pump. And now in just a second, this will start to read on our micrometer. Our vacrometer, I guess is the technical term for it. See, we started off at 60,000, dropping real fast. So our goal is to get to 500 microns on this meter. So we're gonna let this work its magic and we'll report back when we're at 500. All right, so it's been about 
uh, an hour. We're at 410 microns, which means this thing is really pulling it down. Uh, this is a 6 CFM uh, Robin Air vacuum pump. Works extremely well. It's very fast. So what we're going to do first is we're going to shut down our manifold knobs here. Shut off our vacuum pump. And what we're going to do next I'm gonna open these guys and there's an Allen head inside of here. They come from the factory, uh, just hand tight, those little caps. And we're just gonna open these up all the way. And that's it. Just put your caps back on. Give them a little snug with a pair of channel locks or an adjustable. And you should be sitting at about 175, 200, uh, just out of the box, depending on how long your line set is. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to it as far as soldering these in, pulling your vacuum, and charging the system. Obviously, once our electrical is done, we're gonna turn this unit on, check our pressures, and make sure that everything is good to go. But thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please remember to subscribe to the channel and we'll catch y'all on the next one. Later.